Hello everyone, my name is a Fox. This is a video that I've been waiting to make for a long time now. This is a feature that I have working on the Steam Deck that I consider to be Megaton. Now I do have it working on the Steam Deck, but it's on Windows right now. The good news here is that Steam Deck hardware is Steam Deck hardware. If I got this working on Windows, it can work on Steam OS. So let's back up a little. What am I talking about here? We all know that the panel on the Steam Deck is not a VRR panel. It is not a variable refresh rate panel. It does not dynamically adjust the panel based on random FPS coming in. So instead, what we've all been recommending, modern games are very hard to hit 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. And the reason being is that the Steam Deck's hardware, those Zen 2 CPUs, they are starved for power typically when we have GPU and Uncore competing for power as well. You'll be either in 45 FPS or just flirting in the 50s. You won't actually hit 60. So what we typically recommend is to run the game at 30 FPS. What happens there is that there is a huge power saving and you can extend battery life. However, it is not as good of an experience as running at 60 FPS. So, you know, if you can hit 40 FPS, why don't you say, well, why don't you just run at 40 FPS? The reason is, is because 40 FPS does not fit into a 60 Hertz panel like 30 FPS fits into a 60 Hertz panel. So what do we do? Well, we just set the display to 40 Hertz or other frequencies. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, and it's super awesome. Again, if you are running Windows on your Steam Deck, you should 100% do this and feel it because it's amazing. Running a game at 40 FPS on a 40 Hertz panel is so much better than 30 FPS on a 60 Hertz panel. Additionally, you still get really good battery life. So it is almost as if we are getting to have our cake and eat it too. We are, in effect, forcing vrr in a very specific way we're saying no you stay at 40 fps that's it and we're making that work this is a huge feature i'll show you how to do it but first here's a message for this video sponsor surfshark surfshark vpn keeps you safe and private by covering up everything you do online when your device connects to the internet, all that information is encapsulated in an encrypted tunnel. What this means to you is one of the bits of information that identifies you is your WAN address, your public IP address. So one of the benefits of Surfshark VPN is that you can effectively change your public IP address, obfuscating what you are or who you are online. Because what is happening is instead of you being where you are, you are going through an encrypted tunnel to one of Surfshark VPN servers, and that is where you're going out to the internet. So for all intents and purposes, when people are looking at where this data is coming from, they're looking at it from Surfshark servers, not where you are from. One area where having a VPN is critical is when using free open public Wi-Fi. Again, Surfshark VPN will encrypt your data stream from yourself and one of Surfshark VPN servers. Additionally, Surfshark offers multi-hopping, so you can go from one Surfshark VPN to another Surfshark VPN before going to your ultimate destination. This will slow down your traffic a little bit, but if you really cared about your security and privacy and wanted to obfuscate where you were going for even more, this kind of onion router type of stuff, this is uh, one feature that they do offer. Lastly, you can use Surfshark VPN on all platforms and use it on unlimited devices. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash thefox and enter promo code thefox for 83% off and three extra months for free. All right, check this out. Look, you can see where it says 40 FPS up here and take a look at that clean line. Right now, the screen on this Steam Deck is running at 40 hertz. So we're not... There is no judder. It runs so smooth. I'm going to show you how to get this done right now. Let's go ahead and cancel out of this, and we'll get into the gameplay in a second. We'll kind of talk about a bunch of different things as well and why 40 hertz and running at 40 FPS is super cool. There's a few things that you're going to need to download, and if you look in the description field below, I'll link to a few of them. Number one is custom resolution utility. This is a program that a lot of people have been using. This is a way to modify and change parameters on your own monitor itself. Thankfully, Cypher has already done a bunch of work for us and has already exported his configuration, and we can just import that. So thank you very much to Cypher for that. All right, so I already have all of these listed right here. Now, again, all you're going to have to do is click Import down here. Now, I have already listed this here. Now, this file, again, you can tr see it in the description field below. Additionally, this will be on the GPD Discord, so I'll have a link to the GPD Discord. We can find this in the Tools channel as well. So you're going to go ahead and click Open there, and when you click Open, you're going to see all of these different... Uh, resolutions with frequency settings for the monitor. You're going to go ahead and I close it out. But you're going to click OK. At that point, you're going to want to reboot. When you reboot, you're going to want to make sure that you go into Device Manager right here. 
And you want to make sure, now this is something that I tripped up over uh, myself very briefly, you're going to want to make sure that your display adapter is enabled. If you see that disabled, none of these things are going to stick. So you're going to want to go ahead and click enable on that a after the machine is done rebooting. When you're at the desktop, you're going to go ahead and click, right click and go to display settings. And from here, we're taking a look at the very bottom. So you're going to go to advanced display. And then you're going to go, you see right here where I have the refresh rate. Now you can't change this by itself in here. Instead, you're going to go to all modes. So you're going to just click display adapter, uh, display adapter properties. And then you're going to go to list all modes. And in here, you can select what you want. Now, when you change it, so you can see right here, this is 48 hertz, but that resolution is 600 by 800. So that'll lower the resolution. We're going to do 48 hertz right there. And you're going to click OK. When you click apply, the screen's going to flicker. You say keep changes. Now you can see right here that we changed it to 48 hertz. That means that the maximum frame rate that a game can hit is 48, uh, 48 FPS. Now you're going to want to make sure that whatever game you're playing is able to hit 48 very frequently because you're going to want to make sure that that's a smooth experience for you. If we do 48 hertz now, uh, hitting 48 FPS is very much going to be on the higher end of stuff. So you're going to be pushing more CPU to hit a higher frame rate. You're going to start using a lot of power. What I kind of really recommend is 40 hertz. So we're going to click OK on that, and I'm going to click Apply, Keep Changes, and you see 40 hertz is right there. 40 hertz is significantly better than 30 hertz, and we still get really good power savings. So now what's really interesting here is that the CPU really isn't good enough to hit 60 FPS all the time. In fact, Sekiro, I'm running at lower settings as it is. And even when we try to push it down as low as it possibly can go, the best I'm ever, ever going to be able to do on Sekiro is around... 55 FPS, 58 FPS, I rarely hit 60. So you can see I'm already tanking uh, frames there. I'll go back up to 40. All right, so one thing I want you to take a look at is the package power right here, okay? So right now we're using around 20 watts. Now if you take a look at my other video where I had just 60 hertz and then on cap frame rate and let it just go crazy all over the place, you can see that we're using typically around 25 watts. This is the the total, the max amount of power total that you can pull from the Steam Deck, which is slightly high, and I'll be talking about that in another video uh, if we compare it to other mobile platforms, right? And that'll be a video for another day. But if we just focus on the amount of power they're using right now, you can see they're using 20 watt total system power. This is effectively two hours of battery life. But take a look at, at our frame time graph right here. Look how smooth this is. Now there will be some dips. I am playing at relatively low settings uh, for Sekiro. Now even at the very low settings, Sekiro never actually hits 60 FPS. The Zen 2 CPUs clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, they will never actually hit that. Even if we were to push all power to it and we used up the entire package power of 15 watt di directly for the CPU, we'd only max out around 3.2 gigahertz on those CPU cores. That's just not enough power to run Sekiro at 60 FPS. We also have to power the GPU here, so there's too much battle for power going on between the CPU and GPU for us to fully leverage getting 60 FPS. However, because we are modifying how the screen is actually operating, this is a best of both worlds. We are having our cake and eating it too. Now, the display is not VRR. It is not variable refresh rate. However, we are statically setting the refresh rate to 40 hertz, which means that we can lock the frame rate to 40. We have silky smooth gameplay, much better than 30, and we still have really good power savings if we compare it to my settings at 60 hertz and just letting the frame, crack go on, frame rate go uncapped and just trying to do whatever it was. Now, the good thing here is that uh, Cypher has made a bunch of different frequency settings for the display, so you can actually try out different modes like 35, 40, 48, 50. Uh, there's a bunch of modes that you can try, and right now I really like 40 hertz overall. It is exceptionally better than 30, and we still get the power savings other than trying to gun for higher frame rates. So this is something that I personally like myself. Let's play another game where I'm not getting housed all the time. Who was he? I do not know. What did he want with us? We're nobodies. Did you kill him? I did what had to be done. Could have died. Never leave me alone again. All right? All right. 
this been here all this time? Why don't you hold me up there? I can get a better look. Good idea! That hanging bucket. An offering cast? Mother said Odin's disciples fill them with gifts and hang them where thieves can't reach them. That one looked really old. Foolish. What is? Worshipping the gods? The gods care nothing for them. Men should not pray to monsters. Alright, so one thing to note here, you can see that frame rate is uncapped at this particular moment. So you're going to have to go ahead and say lock frame rate or enable V-Sync on some games to force it to the refresh rate of the panel itself. Now, Bioshock Infinite isn't a very hard game to run on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck can actually hit 60 FPS on this quite fine. The thing to note here is that when we lock it to 40 Hz, uh, 40 FPS, we are getting better playability than 30 FPS. But take a look at the power that we're using. We're still using around the same power that 30 FPS gets. So this is getting better frame rate for around the same amount of power being used. So we are, in effect, having our cake and eating it too. This is a very good... Uh, compromise with not having VRR. I really recommend it. If people, if you people are rolling on Steam Deck with Windows right now, definitely try this out. Experience 40 hertz for yourself. It's really, really awesome. Being able to control the refresh rate on the panel itself and having it run well is an awesome feature, and you really need to experience it to believe it. I can't wait for everyone else to try this because this has been something that uh, we in the handheld community have been experiencing for a while now. Uh, obviously, because we were low power, we were never ever able to hit high frame rates as it was. And even in some games, we'd had trouble hitting 40 FPS. Uh, but when you could enable it to run in a smooth, consistent 40 FPS, it is so worth it. That's it for me, guys. As always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.